What's up guys? Alvaro here with Particle School and in this tutorial I'll show you how to work with the script operator and I'll show you some very basic stuff, very simple so we'll emit a particle and give it a speed as you can see here we have no speed in this event and give it a shape and then we will change its shape uh, when it reaches like uh, the frame 15, 16 and then we'll grow this shape based on the particle age so let's close it and I will open this start scene you can download the start and end scene in this video description so now we have those two systems here well, let's pre press 6 and check it out on the first system we'll add the script operator so let's find it here and on the second uh, on the second one we already have a uh, speed and a shape instance we can compare the speed here let's open the script operator and as you can see we already have some information here it's a script developed by Oleg Bayboarding he's the creator of particle flow and this first part here is just some information, so you can delete it all. Now the script operator uh, have like four important parts. The first one on channels, use it pcount do. The other one is on init, pcount do. The other one is on proceed, pcount do. And on release, pcount do. pcount means particle container. And the particle container is the event. So on channels, the particle container do. And channels used are the channels that we're going to use, like time here. In this case, it's using time and speed. And so this way, the script doesn't get like too slow because it doesn't have to read like all the other channels, like scale, position. So here you can say, you can put only what you really want to to read and you can find some information about what you can use here here below the script below everything you have this use time use age use lifespan and here's everything that you can use there then on init particle container do it will when it initializes this script it will do some action you can leave it blank like this and this one on release particle containers do you can leave it blank as well the most important parts are in commonly used are the first one here and the third one here so in my example i want to use the shape first so let's add a channel here you have to write pcount always here dot use what i want to use the shape and then you have to say that it's true so equals true i don't want to use this one so i will delete it and if you have some doubt ah, it, is it shape and stuff you can you can check here like use shape okay so on in each i don't want to do anything and here we have all this information already. Uh, what I can say that it's really important here is the first one, count the count number of particles. This will count the number of particles. And the second, and that one here, for i in one to count do. So I will delete this, all of this one here in the center, and I'll keep both of those. A lot of examples that I've seen around with Mac, with the script operators, all of them use this. So just keep in mind to put this first of all on the on proceed particle count, count do. So open parentheses and do this here. And what it really does is count the number of particles and then for i in one to count. One to count is like one and two and three 
to the number of particles that we have. So in this case, I have only one, but I will increase it later. So I will keep it like this. And let's say that you have like five particles. So it will do this, this stuff like for one to count. So one, two, three, four, five. And then here, the part, the count particle index will be I. And I will be the number of the particle, like one, two, three, four. So you have to keep it this here as well. And the other stuff here we can delete. So I have this parenthesis here. I have to close it. So I'll keep this one here. Now delete all this other stuff. So p count particle index equals i. So let's add another line that to use the to get my shape there. So p count p count dot particle shape equals. So then I have to say which shape that I want. So let's check it here. Now we're using the particle, the particle stuff here, not the channels there. So I want to use the, if you want to use like some speed, you have, you can check here. It's a point three because the speed is a speed vector. So it's three values and the shape is a mesh and that's a mesh and in Max scripting, every time that you get a mesh, you have to use the dollar sign. So I want it to be this mesh here. So I have to, say, to see the name of this mesh and it's teapot001. So I'll just copy this and then I will put a dollar sign and the teapot001. And then you have to put dot mesh in the end. And now you can close your script or press Ctrl E. And it says that the script has have errors. So where is the error? Um, here, I have this parentheses here. So let's delete it and press Ctrl E. Okay, now it the, have, didn't say anything. So it's probably fine. Yeah, it is. So as you can see, I already have my shape here. If I want the sphere, I can put it sphere 001 here. So now let's give it uh, some speed. So I uh, will add the speed channel here. So picont dot use speed equals true. Now I already said and know that the my speed is a three point value, so it's a vector. So picant dot particle speed, and then I have to say the values. And check it out. This here you use picant use speed, and in this area here you use picant dot particle and the the, the stuff. So here it's a three point value. So I'll put it into between these brackets. And I know that the speed is like very fast when it have like one value in this case. So I'll, I want zero speed on, zero, on, on X, zero speed on Y and one in Z. So I know that it's going upwards and I'll press Ctrl V and now check it out. So it's not going anywhere. I don't know why. Yeah, now now it's disappearing. It's not disappearing. In fact, it's like very, very, very fast. And that's because it's not just the same stuff as the particle speed here, because this is like 100 units in one second. And this is just a vector value, speed vector. And, but we can do something just like this here. So we can control using the units by, by second as well. And in order to do it, you have to divide this value here for uh, 4,800. And that's the number of ticks per second that we have in 3ds Max. So in 3ds Max, we have like 
uh, in this case, I have 30 frames in one second. And in these 30 frames, I have 4,800 4, ticks. So if I divide this by these ticks and press Ctrl E, the my my particle speed will be at one unit like per second so in one second it travels only one unit if you check there so you can multiply this value by the number of units that you want so in this this other case here i'm using a 100 units speed so if i'm where is my script yeah, it's here. So if I multiply this value by 100 and press Ctrl E, my particles will have just the same speed. And then you can control like I want it to be 300 units, Ctrl E, and it will be to travel in 300 units per second. So let's leave it in 100. And now I want to delete this this second system here, and I will delete it here as well, because I'm not using this anymore. Now let's check how to use the age channel. So let's create a variable. So we can say if count dot particle age is higher than 15 then I press enter and open another another parenthesis and now I'll do another stuff here so let's say that I want the picount dot particle shape to be my sphere now so dollar sign sphere zero zero one i know that my sphere name is just like this dot mesh then i have to close the parentheses and press ctrl e and let's see it see it's changing its shape and now let's do something. I have this gravity here and I want to show you what's going on. So if I add a force here and add my gravity here, it will not affect my, my particles. And why is that happening? Here on my script operator, this stuff is being applied to this particle on every integration step so here it's not just like the 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 standard speed operator because there it will give the particle speed only in the first frame and the other frames it just uh it don't keep applying this and here it's applying this speed on each frame so the force is trying to push it down but it's not going because it still have that speed going in this direction so we can create another variable to make it only on the first particle frame when the the particle borns so let's create another variable if count dot particle age is uh no is smaller then one which is zero then just you 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 don't have to create this inside of this stuff here you just can close this stuff and and continue and keep it keep doing it just like here so then and then i press enter and open another parenthesis and then i will put my speed here so i'll just delete it from here and paste it here and close it so I'll press ctrl e and check it out now i have this speed going that direction 
and then it falls because it applied the speed only in the only in the first frame the frame is zero so let's make this speed like a bit faster okay and just to make sure that it's working to all all the particles we can put like a few more particles here yeah it's great so let's keep with one particle because it's easier to understand looking at only one i think ah okay i i want to show you another stuff you can control i will cancel the export mode and if you grab the your object here you can see that you have some a lot of uh, all of those options those parameters and you can control this stuff here as well so if you right click here on this white area you can open the listener window and here you see everything that you're doing in the max i will delete this and here here you can see everything that you're doing in max so if i select the teapot it will give the action select the teapot so you know that that th this is the action so I'll select the sphere and i'll change this radius to six so i know now that dollar sign dot radius is the yeah, how, how i control this so i'll keep it in five now close this listener and here on the on this let's just bring it like here here on this where it changed to sphere i can I, I want to add this radius control so i will add another line and p count dot no no it's not p count uh it's the you put dollar sign sphere because you have to specify like which which shape are you getting zero zero one dot the the stuff there in this case the radius dot radius and the, this will be equal i want it to be 20. so let's press ctrl e to evaluate this and now if i scroll the timeline you can see that my particle have this 20 side and it will change it here on your sphere as well and it's kind of annoying so i'll hide it and now you can put some like equals picont dot particle age so i'll press ctrl e and now it this particle age here will be the radius so check it out and if you think it's true it's, it starts it's starting too big you can see it's 17 so i want it to be like 5 so i can make it minus 12 and evaluate now it will start with 5 or 4 i don't know and it will keep growing and yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.